Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter with HurricaneTrack.com here. Back in North Carolina after being out in the desert southwest for a few days. And now it is time to talk tropics. And boy, are things looking like they're going to get active here. It's only August 7th. And we have these three areas out there, most of them in the main development region, with the potential threat of some impacts for our friends in the Lesser Antilles and then into the Caribbean Sea from there. So let's get right to it for August 7th, 2021. Good to have you. Good to be back. It's going to be busy from here on out. So let's get started. National Hurricane Center homepage. Three yellow X's out across the MDR here between Africa over here on the right-hand side and the Lesser Antilles over there. And it is this central one, the middle one here, that I think has the most promise, at least now, of development. The models have been really interesting here. They're trying to make sense of this large monsoon trough out there, this big focusing mechanism that is in place, a huge area of energy out there trying to uh, see if something can kind of pinch off and become consolidated and separate itself from this very large area of convergence and overall um, just favorability, especially at the low levels. And the upper levels are starting to get more favorable as well, so things look like they're starting to come together. And it is that middle system there, which is now 93L. I just got word of that from a reliable source. You know who you are. This is 93L now in the middle, and that's the one we're going to focus on the most going forward. Real quick, though, in the Eastern Pacific, because we don't want to ignore that, we do have a new name storm out here, Kevin, right off the coast of Mexico. No worries about Kevin. It'll move out into the open waters of the Pacific, maybe becoming a hurricane. It could generate some swell activity that moves up towards the Baja, some very small swells, at least looking at my telestration there. Let's thicken that up a little bit. There we go. Maybe some swells, if it gets strong, uh, we'll see about that, and it also has a lot to do with how big the wind field is, but really no concerns for Mexico. They have been lucky there this season with no impacts really to speak of from any of the tropical activity out that way. But again, in the Atlantic, we have these three systems, and it's this middle one that we're going to focus on, so let's do just that. The overall satellite imagery here, the loop of the Atlantic Basin, this is the area that we're focusing on right now. Again, this large region of disturbed weather, lots of energy out there. I'll show you that on the vorticity signature in just a moment. And it's just a matter of which one, if any, will kind of grab the spotlight, so to speak, and in this case, grab the available energy, consolidate it, and take off. It's not a guarantee that anything will happen. You know, just because we have these systems out there, and it's August, and we think that you know something may happen, doesn't mean that it has to happen. But the modeling is starting to come around at least again it was kind of bullish and then it was off again so on again off again it's been kind of a whack-a-mole kind of a situation out there but i think we're starting to see some at least better consensus uh, especially from the gfs and its ensembles even the uk met kind of a little bit on board there the euro is still you know, I'll, I'll show you all of this we'll get to that so let's first do the analysis and then we'll get into the modeling but this is the system 93L right here that I am most interested in. In the infrared satellite imagery, you don't see much in the way of spin uh, and very little in the way of convection, but the energy is definitely there, and that's where this tool comes in very handy. There it is, the low-level vorticity, nice and round. So it's got the spin, the skeleton, the bones are there, if you will, the structure at the low levels. Now it just needs to develop deep thunderstorms and become more um, energetic that way with spiral bands feeding that moisture in and then the air pressure can lower in the center and it'll head off in this general direction with time and again our friends over here in the islands may have to deal with this possibly even as a tropical storm that's not out of the realm of possibility we also need to watch this piece of energy as well and then of course this other one south of the Cabo Verde Islands all of this indicating What's coming? I mean, still, we're only in the first week. I know we're about out of it. We're only in the first week of August. Typically, it's not until August 20th or so, and it's almost literally like a date. You know, the 19th, it's like, yeah, and then the 20th, boom, things change. It has been that way in the past. That last third of August is when things usually really start to ramp up, so that the, the fact that we're seeing this activity now 
suggest that those forecasts of a very busy peak season could come you know and and verify I, I totally believe that they could so here's something interesting here is this system that's 40 degrees west longitude right there and that's 10 degrees north latitude there so our system is just north of the 10 degree latitude area uh, maybe at about 12 or 13 or so but the overall envelope of energy takes up a pretty big area around 40 and we'll call it 12 north right so let's see let's look at the and these are the clues I look at let's look at the uh, upper ocean heat content and there's 40 degrees longitude right there I'll highlight it for you in yellow there's 10 degrees uh, latitude and our tropical wave 93L is right in there let's just isolate it the wave is sitting right in there that vorticity signature so what does that mean it's over fairly marginal and I mean what am I trying to say here the water temperatures are warm but the upper ocean heat content is marginal but it's there this first sort of gradation that you see represents warm water that's fairly deep into the ocean the more of it you get the upper ocean heat content value is getting higher the higher up the scale you go over there on the right hand side of this particular chart and you're just talking about a lot more upper ocean energy that's available but the wave is in the vicinity where it's just beginning it's just starting to feel that warmer water of the higher upper ocean heat content values more of which of course lies to the west over here waiting as this system tracks off to the west northwest with time not only do the surface water temperatures go up but the upper ocean heat content values that that again that latent heat trapped in the upper ocean not just at the skin that is waiting to the west of this system as well so it's in a good environment overall and it's just kind of waiting on things to change around it this wave is and I think it'll start taking advantage of these changing conditions in the next few days all right I think that but the euro at least the operational isn't really on board with it just yet this is the 12z run from today ECMWF and this is the same area of the atmosphere by the way just reminding you that this is 850 millibar of vorticity that's what this is showing here are the areas that we're watching right here the three different pieces of energy and then you've got this giant sprawling area of high pressure the subtropical ridge out here sitting over the Atlantic so those are the players let's see what the euro shows these are in 24-hour increments and it's got a little bit of development there and then it's just kind of like meh right I mean you see here's the front running system that's the middle system another area of interest to the east of all of that this is now at 48 hours 72 uh, and 96 now this is interesting just looking at the euro here this little piece of energy heading towards the islands the northeast corner of the Caribbean that will bring impacts and both the GFS and the euro show that uh, out here at hour 72 not much reflection from that middle system anywhere so the euro not really buying into it just yet we can move this on out to 96 and then eventually 120 and there's just not much to show from that middle system 93L but there's that piece of energy sliding north of the greater Antilles you gotta watch it it'll be headed towards the Florida Straits there will be showers thunderstorms gusty winds squally weather because it's a large tropical wave it's a huge piece of energy out there relatively speaking and whether or not it becomes a depression a storm or a hurricane matters little in terms of the fact that it still will bring impacts so we'll focus on that over the next few days as well so now let's switch over to the GFS the global forecast system same area of the atmosphere 850 millibars it's, which is about 5,000 feet up 12z guidance from today and again these are the areas that we're watching watch this right here this is the one that tries to consolidate over the next couple of days you know and there it is it's small but it does try to get its act together and it heads towards the Caribbean they're fairly potent you know passing right over Puerto Rico by 156 hours and that's almost a week out so here's a couple of things to think about uh, you know it's small in the model so I'm a little skeptical it's like well that's not a very large system so if it does remain that small aerially speaking when we say small we're not talking about intensity it's the aerial coverage if it's small like that it's going to be very susceptible 
to changes in intensity very quickly, either way, up or down. So I'm a little skeptical about that. It's like, well, you know, we'll see. And does the GFS really have the handle on the situation? Maybe it's sort of feeling one area of convection, the, the model generates convection in itself, it's very complicated but fascinating, and it maybe runs with that. You know, so what we have to do is look at this and say, okay, it's got a pretty well-defined vorticity area, that should mean an increase in convection, and there's a lot of other layers of the GFS that you can take advantage of in sites such as this, Tropical Tidbits, Weather Nerds, and the professional sites that you pay for, sure, but it's real easy. You look at this and you say, okay, let's just move it out to 24 hours. All right, so 24 hours from today would be, you know, 8 a.m. tomorrow morning Eastern time. And then another 24 hours, let's hit it to 48. By 48, it should still be sitting right here fairly consolidated. And then we're going to want to go and just look at the satellite imagery. What does it look like in 48 hours once it is sitting about right here? Is it still sort of a naked swirl, if you will, limited convection, or what? You know, that's what we'll have to wait and see. Uh, the models are one thing, but reality, you know, you got to open up the window and see what it looks like. Let's zoom in and just show you how this progresses. Uh, and let me just point out a few things. There's Puerto Rico. Here are the Lesser Antilles, Barbados. Here's that energy coming in from the westernmost tropical wave. And that's going to move through the region there over the next couple of days, you see it moving in from the east, passing over Guadalupe, Guadalupe right there. Uh, how do you say it? It's Guadalupe, right? <laughs> Maybe it's Guadalupe. I still have jet lag. But yeah, this is going to bring some sensible impacts, you know, the impacts you can feel. Uh, the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico from that first system, you see it in there, right? Then there comes 93L. And that is a very small cyclone in the model. So I'm a little dubious and a little skeptical of whether or not this pans out. We'll see. There's the other wave right there. Uh, so there's a lot to watch and there's impacts coming, but exactly what they are, I can't figure it out. Probably nobody else can right now. The models are struggling with it because there's a lot of energy out there. It's a challenge. But you see what happens is, you know, by day seven, we'll just move it out to 168. You know, that could be a problem if it comes to fruition. And then there's that other front leading wave, the front runner, headed towards the Florida Straits. You always have to watch those this time of year. You just never know. So, you know, some interesting things to watch. Nothing to get uh, concerned about just yet. But remember, all of these tropical waves represent large batches of energy in the ocean, or moving across the ocean on, on the Earth's surface, if you will, and they are going to bring impacts. Heavy rain, gusty wind, squally weather, that kind of thing. Whether or not they become a name storm or a hurricane, they're going to bring impacts regardless. So be aware of that. If you live down in that area, maybe you're traveling, you're finally able to travel down there. You just need to be aware of what's up, what's coming your way. You know, whether it's a tropical wave or the extreme on the other end uh, of a name storm or a hurricane. We will find out together, I suppose. All right, that is it from me for this Saturday. As always, thanks for tuning in and listening. I do appreciate it. I am Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. I will be back with more for you tomorrow afternoon.